Now at this point, what's been your biggest song so far in your music catalog? How she. And why do you consider that song in particular to be your biggest at this point? Um, cause that song. First of all, that song was made in like a matter of minutes. And it was like super effortless and it might have been like the song, the one song that made like a difference in my music career, like a big one. It wasn't just like me just putting out music, hoping that people hear it. Like I was putting it out and people heard it. You know what I'm saying? That's, it's a difference. And do you want to put a exact time length on the creation of that song? Yeah, we might have made that song in like 10 minutes. We was getting put out of the studio. He was kicking us out. That's why there's only one verse on it, because he was kicking us out. But I had spent most of the time high off of damn shrooms playing with the fucking LED lights, trying to figure it out. Remember that episode of SpongeBob when he was dancing with the jellyfish? It was like that in the room for like three hours. And then I had did a song, and then I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do one more, because my producers, shout out to Singer, shout out to Dynasty, they, um... They had made a beat and they named it Jin Jin. And so it was like, damn, I gotta gotta do this because it's like named after me. And then actually being like one of my best songs. Like, and I wouldn't even say that's my best song, but like, it's it's a fire song, but you know, one of the ones that did the best, rather. And do you recall what studio this was at the time? I think it was that icon. Now, you just presented a variety of details in the creation of that song. Mm-hmm. But are there any unknown facts or stories in regards to this song that's never been publicly mentioned before? Could be in regards to creating it, recording it, or releasing it. You like, I feel like it's like five questions in one. Hello. I'll slow it down. Are there any unknown facts or stories? About the song, just yes. in general? No, I mean, because people ask me about it all the time, so I would just be pretty transparent about it. I mean, not like there's nothing hot or anything, but yeah, no, nah, not nothing really unknown because I've already described, you know, where it derived from and shit like that. And so no, not really. Now, did you know when you were creating, recording or releasing this song that it was going to be one of your biggest? Fuck no. I didn't know it was going to put me in the position that it put me in now. Um, I didn't know I was going to be doing a lot of shit. Because of that song. I hated that song, actually. It was so crazy was my engineer, I had did two songs. I had did this song called ABCs, and then I had did that shit. And I was just, because I knew I had, I knew I was high. I knew I was being rushed. I felt like I didn't, I didn't give what I could have gave. But in actuality, because I didn't give a fuck, I really gave what I needed, if that makes sense. So, like... That same night, my engineer was like, yeah, I'm finna go home and mix this one. I was like, no, mix that other one. Do the other one that I asked you to do. And he was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. But he did that one, and then, like, I don't know, like, this whole little thing just started going behind that. It became, like, a little thing. Yeah. I was outside, like, so much behind that song. A couple of my friends got pregnant because of that song. It's crazy. It sounds crazy, but it's true. We was outside doing ho shit. Ho's having babies now. Now, when it comes to your past history of drug use. <laughs> what the fuck? You gonna ask it like I'm a crackhead? And this could be any substance you experimented with. Do you have a horror high story? A bad experience. Hell yeah. Okay, boom. I'm just going to cut you off. I had took some shrooms one time, and I was cooking Brussels sprouts on the floor in my kitchen, rocking back and forth, praying to God and Jesus, eating pineapples and drinking milk. And I don't even drink milk, but I needed to do anything to get the fuck off that ride. That shit was tripping me the fuck out. I was looking in the mirror. I was scared of myself. My little sister was looking at me. I don't know. That motherfucker, her face was melting or some shit. I don't no, but I was just in a fucked up head space. You can't really take shrooms when you like in a bad space because you start projecting those like inner feelings, you know? Yeah, no, fuck no. Now, was that your first time experimenting with shrooms? No, and it wasn't my last. Now, you mentioned this is a horror high story. Yeah, it was a terrible time. 
and this wasn't the last time you've did them. Now, sometimes when people experience a horror high story with a drug, substance, whatever way you want to phrase it, they stop that. They quit that. They don't touch that anymore. For you, what led to you doing this after that experience? Well, see, the thing about shrooms is just like, it's like you got to educate yourself about them before you just get to taking them. So it's like once you educate yourself and you understand that, you know, First of all, you want a microdose, you know what I'm saying, because you don't know what your tolerance is. And then it's like, on top of microdosing, you want to just, like, do your research. Make sure you're in the right head space and shit like that. And I knew better. I still did it anyways because I, I take them every day, so I felt like shit. I take them bitches every day. Ain't nothing going to happen, but I took too much. And I ain't microdosed that day. And at that point in your life, was it for medical purposes or just recreational at the time? Um, it's, it was recreational, but it did, like, help with my anxiety and stuff. For shit show. For sure, actually. It made me, like, way more, like, it makes me, like, more personable, like, like, even when I was, like, the, the tour shit, like, is that anxiety, that fear, it kind of just go away. Like, especially, like, with that, that coming out on, on Glosset at the, on the baby tour, like, in front of all those people, instead of where I would be anxious and scared, it just felt like a a high, like an amazing high. And not in like a drug type of way, even though I knew it was the shrooms kind of kicking in too with my adrenaline from performing, but it felt good. It was good. Are you on it right now during this interview? I am, actually. And that horror high story that you just presented, were those authentic shrooms? Yeah, those were raw shrooms. So I'd be eating the raw ones and i eat the chocolate bars. Also, I had a homegirl that made Kool-Aid, too. And it should be like... Kool-Aid infused with shrooms. Yep. Now... You want some? I will gracefully reject that. You don't do, like, no drugs? I take myself out of the equation when it comes to interviews. This is just about you. Oh, okay. 